Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about decision tables in Revenue Cloud, what they are, when and how to refresh those decision tables. So decision tables are the lookup tables that are used in the different Revenue Cloud procedures, for example, pricing procedures and qualification procedures. So you need some reference data to use in those different procedures. That reference data is going to be held in those decision tables. Decision tables are built on top of source data that's going to be coming from standard or custom objects and when changes are made to that source data the decision table need to be refreshed for example you create a new product a new price book entry you need to do a refresh on the price book entry decision table you create a new contract with a new contract item price the decision table for contract item price needs to be refreshed for that pricing to be in effect in your pricing procedure and any other source pricing data. So if you have pricing tiers that are available to your customers, volume tiers for specific products, every time you make changes to those entries, your decision tables need to be refreshed for those changes to be to take effect on your pricing procedure. So how can you refresh your decision, decision table? You have a couple of different options. So under setup, you can either go to pricing setup and sync your pricing data. You can go to specific decision tables and refresh them one by one, or you can create custom flows with the standard apex action that's available out of the box to trigger to have custom processes that are going to refresh your decision tables. Let's jump into Salesforce and see what that looks like in Salesforce. So first option that you've got is to go to pricing setup. And under pricing setup, you have an option to sync pricing data. Now, this will trigger a sync of all the pricing tables that are related to your pricing and revenue cloud. Um, so you can use that, feel free to use it. The issue with that using that option and why I would recommend that you avoid it is decision tables can only be refreshed 20 times per hour. So that's not per table, that's overall with all your pricing tables. So if you've got 15, 20 or more decision tables in your pricing in revenue cloud, then triggering that sync right now could burn through all of your allocation within one run. So based on that information, then what you should be doing is try to refresh specific decision tables when changes are made to them. So your option is to go to decision tables, look for the decision table that you're looking to modify, click through to you to that specific decision table, and then top right, you can hit refresh and refresh that specific decision table. So that's gonna help you avoid hitting those limits on refreshes per hour. And while going to decision tables under setup and looking for it is a good option and is gonna help you avoid burning through your refreshes, it's very limited because every time that needs to happen, you need to go under setup, look for that pricing table and do the refresh. So the final option that you've got is to create a flow and trigger your refreshes from that specific flow. A Couple different options that are available in their flow then, and we can walk through those is you could either create a screen flow that you expose to specific users on the home page or a specific configuration page where you want to make that available, or you could even have it run on specific setup, right? So for example, every time a new contract is set to active, you want to refresh the contract item price decision table to make sure that new, if there is any contract item pricing against your contract, that table is re refreshed right away and available under pricing procedures right away. So let's first create a new flow and see how you could do it with a screen flow. So I'm gonna start from scratch on my flow at next, select my screen flow and it create. First thing I wanna do under my screen flow is I wanna add a new action and we'll get the decision table. So I'll do a get records to get all my decision tables that are available in that environment. So I'll look for the object decision table. I don't need any conditions. I just want to retrieve all the decision tables that are on there because I want to show them under a data table on my next screen. So I'm then going to add a screen to my screen flow. On that screen, let's, well, first set this up. So decision table refresh. Then we're going to add a data table to our screen. Under the data table, we'll say that this is for all our decision tables. So give it a name, give it a label. 
and we can use the label as the title of our table. The source collection is going to be the decision tables from the get we just did above. And then we can configure rows. So we'll say that we only want single selection available so that the user can only select one and push it out for refresh. Then under columns, we'll add at least we want the name of our the label of our decision table. And you can add any data that's relevant to you at this point, right? So we could add last refresh last sync date if we want to see that on our data table. And you can also add last incremental sync date as another data point. So once you've got all the different data points that you want to show on there, that's enough for your decision table. The next step is going to be the user selecting and then adding the apex action to make sure that you're going in and refreshing. Another option that's available when you do a refresh of a decision table is to do an incremental refresh. So for large data tables, decision tables, instead of doing a full refresh, the incremental refresh is going to do a refresh specifically on the recently modified data. So when you have a lot of volume to do and you want this to operate quicker, you can also do simply an incremental update. So if you want to give the option to the running user on your screen flow to only do an incremental refresh, you can add a checkbox to your flow, for example, and simply call that out as incremental refresh. And then if they check that box, then we can pass that to our Apex action and make sure we only do an incremental refresh. So final step then is going to be calling again the out of the box Apex action that's available. So when you search for actions, search for a decision table, and you should have an option available to refresh decision table. Select that, that action, add it, add the label to your action. So we simply are going to call that the same thing as the action refresh decision table. All right. So first thing you need to select for your apex action is defining the API name of the uh, decision table that you want to refresh. So you'll go to your screen, to your decision table data table your selected row, and you want to return the ID of your decision table. So let's simply grab decision table ID. Or sorry, that should actually be API name. So go back to your screen. Decision table first selected row, and you want the API name of your decision table. All right, there you go. And then whether it's incremental or not can be defined by your checkbox on your screen as well. Right, so if it's blank, it's going to be false. If it's true, if the checkbox is checked, it's going to be true, and it's only going to operate a an incremental refresh. That's all you need to get a screen flow to run your decision table refreshes. So give a name, save your flow, and now that flow is available to be added in your environment. Right, wrong name. Give a unique name to your flow and then you can save and activate. Once your flow is activated, you can then add it to any screen again where it's relevant to have it and let your users run through the updates. If you are looking to, for example, add it to your own page, you can go to your own page, edit page. Let's add that flow on there. Simply add that to our layout. So we'll select our flow. We'll do decision table refresh one column will it save once that saves we, we can go back once your page has been saved come back to your screen and you can now see that decision table flow showing up on here and we see a list of the available decision table in our environment what their last refresh date is we don't have any incremental refreshes that have ever been completed on this so as a user now I can either select that checkbox select one of my decision tables and it next to run the action, or I can leave that unchecked. It next, the process runs. And now once that process completes, that last refresh date is gonna be <clears throat> updated to show that it was just now updated. Once the decision table is refreshed, you can see that our last refresh date has now updated to just now, and the refresh has taken place. So that's one option that you can give your users for decision table refreshed. The last one I wanna show is, <clears throat> You could also do it through a record triggered action, right? So if I start from scratch again on my 
new flow will select record triggered flow. And for the best example that I can show again is what I was referring to earlier. So if we have a contract, we'll say that when the contract is updated <clears throat> and the status is updated to active, all right, once the your entry conditions are set, and again, this could be on any object that's relevant to your pricing and your environment, the entry conditions could be whatever you are. This is simply an example, right? But in my use case, whenever a contract is activated, I know I'm gonna have custom pricing for my customers against the contract item price. So I wanna make sure that table is refreshed automatically. I don't wanna have to go in every time and do changes or schedule it any other way. So once I've got my entry condition set, I can then again use the same action. So we'll look for our decision table, refresh. So we'll say refresh contract item price is gonna be the label for this. And then I need the API name. So now it's not being passed by the screen itself. So I can simply go back to our decision table list under setup, look for the API name of my decision table, right? So we'll just scroll down, look at contract pricing entries. This is the one that I want. So we'll grab the API name for that decision table, add back to our flow. That's what we're going to pass into the flow as the API name for the decision table. Whether you select that it's going to be incremental or not, you can either skip this or set that one to true because we know it's always going to be recent changes that we want to push through with that specific update. And then you can hit save and then give a name to your flow as you would typically do. So you give your flow name, you hit save, that's now active. And now whenever a user goes in, creates a new contract, adds contract item price, activates that contract, you know that the decision tables are gonna be always up, up to date and any new quote or order that's generated for that customer is gonna have their up to date contract pricing. And again, this is purely an example. You could apply this to any of your decision tables, any of your business processes, and make sure that your data is always up to date based on user actions, instead of having an admin take the step every time that something needs to change. I hope this was an helpful way to look at decision table when and how to refresh them. Please take a moment to, to subscribe if you like the content and let me know if you've got any questions. Always happy to help. Have a good day.